Hello once again everyone and we are back together. Uh, so we're looking at um, geometry in this case. Um, so uh, if you have not subscribed as yet, please just make sure you're part of the family and yay, we are over that 100,000 mark and thank you to all of you uh, for the support. All right, so we we'll, let, let's have a quick look at, uh, you know, geometry uh, because, you know, it's just one of those sections that sometimes gives you guys a an unnecessary headache. All right, they say to us in the diagram, DEFG is a cyclic quad. Now, what I would want you to do, ladies and gents, is that for everything that is included in your uh, diagram, okay, uh, get into the habit of just highlighting what's important. So the fact that it is a cyclic quad in this case, uh, means that remember we know that the opposite angles uh, of of a cyclic quad would be uh, um, supplementary okay uh, opposite angles so it in in this case just for argument's sake if if you were to look at d1 uh, sorry f1 as well as d uh, the sum of f1 plus d would be equal to 180 please remember that right but what we also know is that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is also uh, equal to the opposite interior angle. Okay, so if you look at uh, um, that line there, uh, that is extended all the way up until R. So you see there's an exterior angle uh, uh, E4, right? So E4 in this case, remember it's equal to the opposite interior angle. So it means that it would be equal to uh, G1 and G2, okay? Right, so uh, these are all the things that we always need to be mindful of when we are doing uh, geometry, okay? Right, so uh, they said to us uh, DE is parallel to GF. So let's look at that, okay? Let me take a different color for that. So they said to us we've got DE, all right. Okay. So they've indicated it there. So what does that mean? We've got alternating angles. We've got co-interior angles. So for instance, uh, the sum of angle D plus angle G uh, would be equal to 180. Remember, those are uh, co-interior angles, right? And then um, in this case, we also have, if I were to take the sum of F1, as well as E1, 2, and 3. In this case, obviously those are co-interior. But I also have alternating angles, in this case, which is G2. So if I were to look at G2, as well as E1, those are alternating angles, right? Uh, because obviously uh, those lines are parallel. Um, well, corresponding angles, no, I don't have this time. Okay, so uh, I'm just indicating all of that to you so that once we solve the question, we, we are able to identify all that we need. All right, now uh, they've told us that DE is produced to R. So remember, once they say it's produced, it simply means it's, it forms a straight line, right? Uh, they say T is, an, is another point uh, on the circle, okay? So I see the, uh, the angles at same segment there. And then they say to us, EG, FT, and ET are drawn. And E4 is 72 and G1 is 16. Right, ladies and gents, uh, so how we would uh, look at it there. So let's, let's try and uh, they say to us, determine with reason the size of the following angles, right? Now, they wanted D, uh, D, uh, DGF. Okay, so D, G, F. Okay, we're looking at this angle here. All right, uh, this guy is just not responding. Okay, so D, G, F. So it means we're looking at that angle over there. I'm sure you can see that, right? So if I were to uh, look at that, so it means that um, D, G, F... Okay, so DGF is equal to uh, R4 in this case, right? Which is equal to 72 degrees. But why is that? Okay, 
we say the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Okay, right. So that's the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, uh, what they uh, are asking for next. So they said we should find angle T, right? So in this case, I want us to see there. So if I were to look at that angle, that entire angle is 72. So DGF, remember it was given as 72 degrees, right? But now I know that uh, G1 is 16, okay? So it means to find G2, I would have to now say, well, that's 72 minus 16, and that would give me 56, right? So this little angle over there, uh, so this angle, well, not so little. Uh, so this angle over here is 56 degrees, right? But remember, G2 would be equal to, so this angle over here would be equal to uh, a T, why? Because they are subtended by the same arc, or you can say angle at same segment. So to answer that question, um, right, so that was the first one. Uh, so now we're going to the second one. So we're going to say, okay, so uh, D1 plus D2, angle D1 plus D2 is equal to 72 degrees. Okay, so we've just found that out. So that's DGF, right? Uh, so we know that D1, sorry, not D1, sorry, that's G1. Uh, so that's G1. So that's G1 and G2, 72. So in this case, I know that my G1 uh, is 16. Okay, that was given to us. Okay. So it means that uh, 16 plus uh, G2 is equal to 72. And so therefore G2 would be equal to 56 degrees, right? So um, in this case, uh, so we are simply saying, so that angle is uh, 56 degrees. So therefore uh, G2 is equal to angle T which is equal to 56 degrees. And why is that? The reason is angles at same segment. Okay. Right. So in this case, we now have found our angle T. So I can indicate that. We know this would be equal to 56. All right. And then let's go for the last one. They're looking for angle GEF. All right, so let's look at GEF. So angle G, uh, E, and F. So they're looking for that angle there. All right, so starting from G, going to E, going to F. So we're looking for that angle there. Right, so how would we be able to get uh, that angle? Okay. Uh, now, several things that we, we, we need to just be mindful of there, right? Uh, if you look at, uh, in fact, I should have just uh, made that with uh, just a different color. So, uh, in this case, we've, we know that we've got uh, that angle as 56 degrees, right? All right, so we've got the 72 degrees over there, okay? And we also know that we've got parallel lines as well. Okay. Now, the question is, uh, ladies and gents, all right, uh, could I find perhaps the angle, um, you know, F1? Um, you know, let's, let's just use uh, angle F1. Okay. Is it possible for me to find angle F1? Well, remember, first of all, uh, I can uh, first... In fact, I can use uh, um, uh, alternating angles. Remember that R4 is equal to F1. In this case, we've got alternating angles there. Uh, if you wanted uh, to, you could have also used um, the fact that, okay, so this would be uh, 180 minus uh, F1. 
I mean, uh, uh, 180 minus, um, what is that angle? Uh, minus G, okay? So 180 minus G. So that would be 180 minus 72. And why? Because they are co-interior angles. And then you can use opposite uh, angles of a cyclic quad. But in this case, I think it's much easier for us to use alternating angles. So we know F1 would be 72 degrees, right? But now... Uh, let's look at this triangle over here, right? So looking at triangle EFG, right? That triangle over there. Okay, so now we can find out using sum of angles on a triangle, right? So I'm going to write that out uh, so that we are able to do it together. Right, so uh, I said F1. Okay, so that's the last question. So F1 is equal to R4, which is 72 degrees, okay? Um, but why was that? Remember, we always need to state the reason, right? So these are alternating angles, okay? Uh, we can state that uh, DE parallel to GF, okay? And then uh, we said, therefore... In triangle EFG, okay, we know that angle, uh, the one that they are looking for, GEF, GEF plus uh, angle F1 plus angle G2 is equal to 180, and these are angles on a triangle okay and so in this case we know that that's going to be a gef that's the one that we want okay but we know that uh, f1 was 72 or is 72 and then uh, g2 is given as 56 and this is equal to 180 and of course, you can see that GEF uh, will just be, so that would be 180 minus 72 and subtract 56 as well. Okay, so that means that will be 52 degrees. Okay, so that is how the cookie crumbles, ladies and gents. And by the way, please just remember all your theorems in this case. Uh, just make sure that you can apply them uh, when necessary. All right, so we leave this question here for now, and I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.